From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ready with your call to Hartford. Uh, hello? Hello, Mr. Scottman, Johnny Dollar. Hope I didn't get you up. Uh, no, no, no. I've been very anxious to hear from you. Well, I thought I'd better call, Mr. Scottman. I just found out that David Perling paid a reporter here in Key West to print that story about his death. Yeah, I see. I can be in New York at 7 tomorrow morning. Could you meet me there sometime? I can meet you at Idlewild. My plane comes in at 7.20. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Liability and Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Perling matter. Expense account continued. Item three, $98.09. Airfare and incidentals, including board and room, Key West to New York City. Mort Scottman was in the airport coffee shop having tea and toast in the best tradition of a vice president. He looked shaved, rested, and fresh. Would you uh, like some breakfast, Mr. Dollar? Mm, just coffee for now, thanks. Cup of coffee, please. Well, we seem to have made nice connections. Not uh, 7.30 yet. Yeah. Mr. Scottman, the reporter in Key West who printed that story about David Perling was paid $100 in cash to do it. Perling paid her to file an erroneous story that he had been killed in a boating accident. You said uh, cash? Yeah, that's right, cash. No check. No way to prove it one way or another. Just the reporter's word. And she said she'd deny it if anybody else asked her. Disclaim the whole thing. Well, where does that put us? Well, look. Perling had to pay somebody to fire that boat, probably the skipper, I don't know. But it's an angle if you're thinking about legal lines. It's very good. Of course, the boat would demand explanation. Oh, well, let's let it go for the moment. I noticed a retraction disclaiming the story of Perling's death is in every paper this morning. It was in all of last night's papers, too. Now, if the story could affect the stock market, when would it show up? Today, at the latest. There was no action yesterday? Not on the exchange, no. How do you feel about this whole thing now? In view of the fact you've ascertained that Perling himself arranged for his own death report to be published, I can only assume that he did it for one reason, to take advantage of some brisk trading that would occur because of such a report. But there's been nothing of that so far. Hmm. Uh, tell me, Mr. Scotman, in the event this does happen, what would you do? Well, I, I don't know exactly. Possibly report the matter to the exchange and see if Perling could be prosecuted for manipulation. Well, let's go over there and see what's what. <laughs> Item four, five dollars. Cab fare for myself and Morton Scottman to Wall Street and the New York Stock Exchange. Since I didn't understand too much about the board, I simply sat and kept an eye on Scottman. The pinstripe suit, the Hamburg, the tie, the shirt, the glasses. <laughs> Somehow he tickled me. I was beginning to like the guy. About 15 minutes before the place closed, he cleared his throat and touched my arm. I uh, suspicioned wrong, Mr. Dollar. There's been no manipulation on the exchange. I thought certainly if there had been any, it would appear in that Alabama company. <laughs> I was wrong, and I apologize for taking up your time. You're paying for it. Besides, I'm glad you did. Mm hmm? Shall we go? Yeah. Where? Well, we know he didn't have the story printed to cheat on the market, but we still have the same old question. What's that? Why did Perling pay that reporter to say he was dead? The reporter lied to you. You've uh, been lied to before, I'm sure. Oh, sure. And by experts... But she wasn't a good one, not even halfway good. So I still believe her story. You believe that board up there? I believe that, too. Well, then? Perling had a reason for getting such a story printed. I want to find out about it. <laughs> Expense account item five, four dollars. Lunch for Morton Scottman and myself. After lunch, I checked into the new Weston. Item six, fifty dollars deposit, car rental. A phone call to the offices of David Perling gave me the information that Mr. Perling was at his home on Long Island. I drove out there. A small estate greened up with all the lush things that happened there this time of the year. As I reached the place, I noticed a group of people in white flannels and dark blue jackets mixing cocktails on the terrace. One of them I recognized from previous newspaper pictures as David Perling. A middle-aged woman with iron-gray hair and the figure of a 16-year-old girl opened the door. She looked from behind dark glasses disapprovingly. Yes? How do you do? 
I'd like to see Mr. Perling, if I may. I'm Mrs. Perling. May I help you? Well, this is a business matter, Mrs. Perling. My name's Dollar, Eastern Liability and Trust Company. Well, he's not in now. I suggest you call his office and explain the nature of your business to his secretary. Good day, Mr. Dollar. Well, look, I know he's here. I saw him as I drove up. You are both impertinent and rude. I'm sure he'll see me if you give him my name and tell him I just came back from Key West and that I had a long talk with a newspaper reporter down there. Since you saw so much as you drove up, you might have noticed that we're entertaining guests, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I noticed that. Wait here. I stood there a moment on the wide colonial porch and wondered what made me such a social outcast. A man who was tending the grounds walked by and turned on the sprinkling system. He waved at me, and I waved back. I felt better. On the terrace, I could hear the tinkle of glasses and a little laughter now and then. Finally, David Perling showed up. He was a tall man with a hairline that started about an inch above the heaviest eyebrows I've ever seen. Two-toned shoes, white flannels, and a Mexican sport shirt fitted in with a broad shoulders and wide mouth grin that came off just briefly when he looked at me. My wife told me to throw you out. Can you think of any reason why I shouldn't? I'm about ten pounds lighter than you, but... I might be a good 15 years younger. Tell me what you want, kiddo, and then get out of here. I want you to tell me why you paid Gracie Edwards $100 to print a story about you being dead. Who are you, anyway? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. What's all this to you? An investigation. There's no way you can prove I paid that girl to print that story. I know that. I was telling a friend of mine today that something probably could be proved about the boat, if it had to be. Then the reporter thing had come out. I don't know. You see, Eastern Liability had an idea that you might have had that story printed to cause a little action on the stock market. Who at Eastern Liability? I'll keep that to myself. Well, it doesn't make any difference anyhow. They're way off base. Or can't you figure that part? Mm, that's why I'm here. I figured that part. Suppose I told you I don't know what you're talking about. I'd ask you all over again. Tell you about a reporter and a boat. Dollar, you've gone this far, and it's probably as far as you're going. I'm not going to tell you anything. At least anything specific. I will tell you this much. I paid the reporter in cash. I paid the boatman the same way. Whatever reason I had, it was a good one. Meant to harm no one. You're sure about that, Mr. Perling? As sure as I'm going inside right now and mix another batch of martinis. For the second time in a matter of minutes, I was standing on a porch feeling like typhoid Mary. Somehow I halfway believed David Perling. I also halfway believed that whatever reason he had meant something to me. All halfway thinking. If you want to be left alone, you don't slam a door once or even twice. You invite the asker of the question in, give him a drink, introduce him to your friend, slap him on the back, and lie through your teeth. You don't tell a man to leave, because that's the best way in the world to make him keep coming. So I waved at the friendly gardener once more, climbed into my rented car, drove back to the New Weston, and sat down with a magazine. Johnny Dollar. This is Celia Perling, Mr. Dollar. Hello, Mrs. Perling. I think I should like to talk to you, Mr. Dollar. David told me why you were at the house. Mm hmm. I'm downstairs in the lobby. I'll be right down, Mrs. Perling. I had to drive some friends in tonight, and I thought I'd stop and have this chat with you. I'm glad you did. Somewhat embarrassing. I mean, after the way I acted at the house. Oh, well, suppose we forget that part, Mrs. Perling. Does Mr. Perling know that you're here? No, I'll tell him when I get home. There's something I must know. What's that? You aren't just a sensation seeker or something like that, are you? Mrs. Perling, let me answer you this way. You came to me. How you found me, I don't know, but you did. You also found out I'm a legitimate investigator interested in facts, am I right? David called a friend of his with the Allied Bureau, and they told him you were an insurance investigator. Uh -huh. And they also told you that when I work a case in New York, I generally stay at the New Weston. Is that about it? I'd like to ask you a question. Are you going to continue with this matter, the one you discussed with my husband this afternoon? I suppose I am. You mean you you believe there was something ulterior and David having that story printed? Well, let's say I believe his answers about it were unsatisfactory. I'm the fellow who's supposed to find out why. Why? It's my job. I can assure you there wasn't anything wrong about it at all. It was a rather personal matter and certainly could harm no one. I'm glad to hear that. I heard it once before, though. Your husband said it to me today in practically the same words. Would you like to buy me a drink? Sure. Come on. We walked through the lobby to the cocktail lounge without a word. We sat down without a word, and I ordered a couple of bourbons and water. Still no word. All around us, people poured drinks, laughed, and talked. 
I glanced at Mrs. Perling from time to time and wore the blankest expression I knew how. Finally, it worked. She began in a small voice. We have a daughter, Mr. Dollar. Her name's Eugenia. Jeannie, we call her. Mm hmm She's the reason for that story in the papers. Tell me about it. It's not easy, you know. It's... I mean, it's, it's admitting a prominent defeat to explain it. We're... David and myself are considered quite capable people. Capable at most everything. Business, home. Yeah, capable of everything except raising a child into a woman. I'd rather not go into the faults that we have, Mr. Dollar. No need to. Are they that obvious? Oh, I didn't mean that. I just mean it seems painful for you to even discuss this. I'll say it this way. We've had too much money and too little time to put it on... on Jeannie. Now we're suffering for it. How do you mean? Jeannie got sick and tired of being alone and unattended and not understood. She left home a year ago and we haven't seen her or heard from her since. She left a note saying that we never would. I suppose we deserve it. Well, I wouldn't try to judge that. We have no idea where she is, what she's doing, even if she's with someone. We just know she's gone. It's really quite ridiculous. Now that Jeannie's gone, we know how much we wanted her around. What about the police? Well, we... we didn't go to the police. I think you can understand why. I mean the publicity. Who did you go to? The Aimwell Agency. They've been working on it. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. Any luck? Not a sign of her. Do you understand now? Well, I don't understand everything. I'm sorry she's missing. But about the story in the paper... Well, Davy arranged that. I mean that his death would be reported. It was a crazy thing to do, I suppose. But we've tried everything else. He thought that if he were reported dead, Jeannie, wherever she was, was would see the story and possibly contact me. You see, it's, it's unbearable knowing she's alive somewhere, hating us this way. We wanted another chance. No luck? No luck. Not a word. Not a word. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the trap is all baited. And guess who walks in? Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for another exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.